the start of the Glasgow Marathon. An annual challenge for people in the peak of condition to test their endurance. But it's also a major fundraising event for medical research. Over 400 of these runners are being sponsored for research into muscular dystrophy, a hereditary disease that causes wasting of the muscles. The money they raise will go to help find a cure for boys like Lee and Damien Evans, who both suffer from the most common and most severe form of muscular dystrophy called Duchenne, after the French physician Guillaume Duchenne, who first described it over a century ago. Before the age of three, boys like these begin to lose the use of their muscles. It starts in their legs, and before adolescence, they lose the ability to walk and become wheelchair bound. This gradual weakening of the muscles eventually spreads to every part of their body, and it's untreatable. In the majority of cases, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is inherited by a boy receiving a defective gene from his mother. But no one knows which gene is the culprit and why it wreaks such havoc in the body. Until the Duchenne gene is located, and we can find out what it normally produces that is so essential to the working of healthy muscles, then the cause of this disease will remain unknown. But what was once a scientific daydream is fast becoming reality. The mapping of genes on chromosomes is being made possible by new methods of manipulating DNA, the chemical substance from which all genes are made. In different laboratories, they've been trying to isolate and sequence the Duchenne gene. In Toronto, Dr. Ron Wharton. In Oxford, Dr. Kay Davis. And in Boston, Dr. Lewis Kunkel. Their task is a marathon of another kind. But in this case, it's not who wins that's important. It's that the race is won. The scientists are spurred on by the need to solve what is a common human problem. Duchenne muscular dystrophy affects all races, but usually only boys. All right, Dion, I'd like you to try to stand up for me. One in every 4,000 boys are born with it every year. Because the disease is sex-linked, we know that the gene has to be somewhere on one of the sex chromosomes. Very good. Very good. But the discovery that gave scientists their first breakthrough came a few years ago from labs like those of Dr. Ron Wharton in Toronto, where they were studying the case of a girl who showed classic symptoms of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Such cases were rare and unexpected, as girls don't usually suffer from the disease. It was examination of the girl's chromosomes that provided one of the vital clues to the location of the gene. If chromosomes are stained, they show a distinct pattern of banding under a microscope. Each of us carries 23 pairs, and we inherit one member of a pair from each parent. The pair of sex chromosomes determines whether we're male or female. A boy has one X chromosome from his mother and a smaller Y chromosome from his father. The Duchenne gene is carried somewhere on the X chromosome. And if a boy inherits a defective gene, then he will get Duchenne dystrophy. Girls have two X chromosomes. And if they carry a defective Duchenne gene on one X, this is usually compensated for by a normal gene on the other X. For a girl to suffer from the disease, she would be expected to carry a defective gene on both X chromosomes. But in Ron Wharton's patient, the cause was different. It was due to an irregularity of one of her X chromosomes. Attention focused on a particular band on the short arm of the X chromosome, 
for it was in this region that one of her exes had broken. The broken end had become exchanged with part of another chromosome. Such an event is called a translocation. One consequence of the exchange was that the normal X chromosome became suppressed. Only the translocated X was active. So this chromosome was responsible for the expression of the disease. Could it be that the break had disrupted a normal Duchenne gene? That was the conclusion they came to at the Toronto laboratory. Dr. Ron Wharton. I think the important thing about the girls with translocations is that there were a number of them by 1981, 82, there were about five or six. And the crucial point was that in every case, there was a rearrangement of the X chromosome. And in every case, the rearrangement took place at the same site in the X. And we concluded, and others concluded as well, that that had to be the site of the Duchenne gene because all the patients had their chromosomes broken at the same place. What do you have this morning? Although it was clear that the breakpoint on the X chromosome lay in or close to the gene, Isolating DNA from that region would prove elusive for some time yet. DNA can be isolated from cells, but even under the most powerful electron microscope, it shows up as a tangled mass. To pick out a single gene, you would need to take one of these tiny clumps and unravel it. In a chromosome, coils of DNA are wound around lumps of protein. Take away the protein and you'll see that DNA is like a twisted chemical ladder. There are two strands held together by rungs of four different chemicals called bases. The order in which bases are arranged is crucial because the instructions for making the proteins needed for life are written in this four-letter alphabet. A for adenine, C for cytosine, G for guanine and T for thymine. Over 300,000 bases may make up a single gene. Still a minute amount of the total DNA in a cell. The task of finding something as small as a gene is like looking for a footprint on a 26-mile marathon. But scientists knew they had to look along a particular stretch. One X chromosome translates to about one mile of a marathon. Now they had their first landmark on the route, the breakpoint on the X chromosome in girls suffering from Duchenne. But was this site also important in boys with the disease? The answer to this question was provided by Dr. K. Davies, working at the University of Oxford. She decided to look for stretches of DNA as markers on the X chromosome that were close to the suspected site of the gene. Our first objective was to purify the X chromosome so that we could isolate sequences from it which were on the short arm. Now, if Duchenne muscular dystrophy really was on the short arm, then we could find DNA markers close to it and they would be co-inherited with the Duchenne muscular dystrophy gene. So if we take two markers on either side of where we suppose it is, then whenever we got co-inheritance of this, we should get co-inheritance of the Duchenne muscular dystrophy mutation. Her search for markers began by making an X chromosome library. The X chromosome can be chopped into bits and grown up or cloned in bacteria, so that each bacterium contains a different piece of the X chromosome. To find out which bits might carry muscle genes, she first looked to see which genes were active in muscle tissue. She extracted and radioactively labelled muscle genes and added them to the culture of bacteria containing bits of the X chromosome. In this way, she was able to screen muscle genes across the X chromosome library in search of muscle coding sequences that mapped on the short arm of the X chromosome. Any bacteria whose DNA matched up with muscle genes would be marked out by areas of radioactivity. By exposing the plate of bacteria to photographic film, those bacteria containing the bits of X chromosome that she was interested in showed up as black dots. 
She could isolate the X chromosome DNA by picking the bacteria in this part of the plate. Kay Davis succeeded in isolating DNA markers that flanked the site of the breakpoint in girls with translocations. These markers were co-inherited with Duchenne in boys. So here was further evidence that confirmed the gene's location to be somewhere in the vicinity of the breakpoint. Such markers could be used as DNA probes to trace the inheritance of the faulty gene. So there was an important spin-off from her research for the families of children with Duchenne. An accurate way of detecting carriers is particularly important for women. Two-thirds of all Duchenne cases are inherited on the X chromosome that boys receive from their mother. The same chromosome could also be carried by other female relatives, and if so, could be inherited by their children. A mother usually has no idea that she's a carrier unless she has a son with the disease. Even then, it's not certain whether she has passed on the faulty gene. It could have arisen by a mutation in her son. In Mrs. Evans's family, there had been no previously known history of Duchenne muscular dystrophy until her first son, Lee, began to show symptoms. Yeah, boys, how's it going? All right. winning. Miracle. Cheating. Well, Lee had been falling over and couldn't walk very far for quite a little while. So we had an appointment to go up to Guy's and he had various tests. And the doctor told us that Lee had a disease called muscular dystrophy. Um, we didn't know anything about muscular dystrophy, what it would do to him, what it was doing to him. We didn't know anything at all. But he told us then that there was no cure. We didn't have any idea that 